Collaboration is nothing new to Central Bucks teachers who regularly work in groups to develop curriculum, create assessments, and evaluate best practices. Students collaborate to solve problems, complete lab-based activities, and develop presentations. However, for purposes of instruction, a model where teachers and students collaborate and formulate their own educational plan is extremely rare. This year, Central Bucks West teacher Lynn O'Hara and senior Carson Rolleri did just that and this program is serving as a model for teacher-student collaboration across the nation. The National History Day program, run from the University of Maryland, is an annual competition that involves half a million students across the nation to develop and present historical research. Students chose topics and research projects based on an annual theme. They developed final products of their choice, including papers, website documentaries, performances, or exhibits. In January 2011, National History Day offered the Albert H. Small Normandy Sacrifice for Freedom Student Teacher Institute. The Institute offered an opportunity to 15 teachers to study the D-Day invasion in Washington, D.C. and Normandy, France. Uniquely, this institute offered that each teacher would bring a student, a current sophomore or junior, who would study alongside the teachers. Nationally, 104 teacher-student pairs applied for this opportunity and 15 were selected. Those fortunate enough to be accepted received their homework in February. The Institute began with a shipment of books, eight books that they read together over the next three months. Students and teachers posted their responses to readings to online discussion forums via email and over Facebook. The most influential book I read with my student was John Keegan's The Second World War. It was a big book, it was about 600 pages, but it really went into a lot of depth and it was a very interesting experience to do homework with a student for this institute. The most influential book that we had to read were, was definitely The Bedford Boys. Um, with history, I really love being able to see how a big event can really affect an average person or how an average person can really affect a big event. And this book really captured that. It was devastating to learn that not many of the men from that town were able to come back and it really set the tone for the rest of the trip. However, the most important component of the Institute was the Fallen Soldier Project. Carson selected a Pennsylvania soldier to study. Working with Michael Kern, a graduate student at George Washington University, Carson began researching the experiences of technician fourth class Willard U. Beagle from Lee Heighton, Pennsylvania. Arriving in Washington, D.C. on June 18th, Ms. O'Hara and Carson spent five days studying the D-Day invasion. The time in Washington included lectures from experts from George Washington University, United States Military Academy at West Point, United States Navy, and the National Archives. Teams researched at the National Archives and visited war monuments and Arlington National Cemetery. On June 23rd, the teams flew to Paris. The remainder of the trip was focused in Normandy. Traveling to the key locations in the Normandy campaign, the group toured Saint-Mir Eglise and Luge de Mer. The focus of this trip was for the teams to really understand the geography of the campaign. They climbed through German bunkers on Pointe du Hoop, walked on the original Pegasus Bridge, and spoke to a woman who knew the soldiers who held off German army from taking Pegasus Bridge and reinforcing the bunkers at Omaha Beach. However, the most remarkable day was the final day in Normandy. Beginning at Utah Beach, Carson was offered the opportunity to help Dr. Tom Long give the lecture. She told the story of Technician 4th Class Beagle and how his job was to lead a small detachment of soldiers who unloaded and organized equipment on Utah Beach. They visited the monument to the first engineers and saw the road named after the fallen soldiers. After walking Omaha Beach, Dahl Green Sector, the teams climbed from Omaha to the American Cemetery at Normandy. That afternoon, each student eulogized their particular soldier, and the graves came alive with stories of paratroopers, officers, pilots, and infantrymen. The soldiers were remembered and their stories were told. The superintendent of the cemetery and former U.S. Marine, Han Zucker, gave each student the American flag and French flags that they placed at the grave, now stained with the soil of Normandy to return home and continue to tell the story. The most remarkable part about the trip was being on the beach. It was amazing to see how vast that beach was and 
the huge cliffs and what these men were up against. It really, none of that can really be captured in a book. And to be able to see that and be standing there where they stood and where many men were slaughtered, it was just, it was really eye-opening. The collaboration continued after the trip. Carson and Miss O'Hara developed a website honoring technician fourth class Beagle that will be published by National History Day. They have been invited to co-author an upcoming article about teacher-student collaborative learning. Both were invited to speak at National Spirit of 45 Day Ceremonies in Philadelphia's 30th Street Station and the World War II Memorial in Washington, D.C. I was a National History Day student, and I have always said that History Day opened doors. It opened doors for me as a student, and I love the fact that it continues to open doors for my students today. This trip was really a remarkable experience. It really made me appreciate what we have today and what freedom actually is. These men, they were, even, they were barely even men. They were so young. They were willing to give their lives so that we could live like we do today, and it just, this trip reminded me of that, and it was a remarkable experience.